This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Hello my goblins and ghouls, my name is Steven and today we are redoing the frame. This first main pass has been working out pretty well, but as I've been using it, I've been noticing all these little things that are kind of crappy about it and I want to improve. For example, I totally did not take any cable management into consideration when I was making this design, so there's cables all over the place. I also generally had a lot of my tolerances wrong and made a lot of goofy, stupid mistakes. Plus, I just completely omitted other things like limit switches. There's just no place to mount limit switches on this design. So although this has been good, I made something better. This thing's got a whole bunch of new features. First off, it actually has a place to put limit switches, which shouldn't even be a thing to celebrate. That's just a bare bones. You gotta have it. I cored out a whole bunch of areas in the prints so they use less filament, but they're still really, really strong. I resized a few things that will work better with FDM. I kind of tolerance everything, assuming a perfect fit and not everyone's printer has that good dialed in tolerance. So these new parts are a little bit more forgiving with if your printer's good or not so good you'll still be able to print them okay. And a couple other sneaky little things I slipped on in there. A lot of these design changes also came from people that contributed to the project. They downloaded the repo, they looked at the steps, they updated the files. These people have been so helpful in fixing all my silly mistakes and giving me much better advice on how to design this thing so that it's really easily printable, it works well, and it's very accurate and repeatable. So thank you so much if you're one of those people that helped contribute to the whole design. And this will not be the last time that I redesign this. I'm still gonna continue to add improvements and change parts and switch them out and see if they work better. So if you see something that I'm doing this that you think is dumb and you think it should be done a different way, go to the GitHub page and there's a whole bit of instruction on how you can go and file an issue to help improve the CAD. So now all that is left to do is to print every single new part out on my printer and put the whole gosh darn thing together. cool new things with this design. These feet have this goofy little rocky bit here, and then the end of them is flush with the motor mount. And what this lets you do is, if you need to work on the motherboard or something going on underneath the machine, it will just rock back, and it'll stay upright. So if you need to like redo some of the wiring or something underneath that main panel, it's really easy to just pop it up. It's all really accessible. This also includes plugging in new feeder floors into the motherboard and generally handing all of that wiring and everything. It makes it so much easier when you can just pop the thing up. I also traded a few printed parts for off the shelf components, namely the ones holding the back rail on. Look at those lovely metal pieces. I used to have a printed piece that would hold this onto this rail, but it's better to use off the shelf. Metal is stronger and <laughs> more reliable to hold these really important structural pieces together. So I got some little right angle brackets that would work for this and it's been a huge improvement already. You can just feel it's like way more rigid. I also added some little channels like this guy. Come on, focus for me, bud. For cabling to run through. So stuff will be much neater this time. It'll run all inside the actual extrusion, slipping in a little cheeky places like that. And it'll be just generally much more organized and prettier. Plus, Drum roll. See that little thing right there? It took me, what, six months to add limit switches to a CNC machine? It's not even technically on there yet. It's just a little void for it. That's 
that's where it's gonna go. Mm. Limit switch. Next is making the X and Y carriage tensioned onto the V slot and then running all those GT2 timing belts so it can all move with the motors. All right, X and Y time, baby. Mm, baby. <laughs> Check out this beauty. Mmm. Framey. So I know what you're thinking. Steven, this looks exactly like what you had before. Would you even change? Well, I'm glad you asked. There are a few things in particular that were much needed for the Y gantry pieces. Good number of things have changed here. I really should just change how I'm doing this so I don't have to hold the whole thing up, but whatever. We're in too deep. The little brackets to hold the timing belt in place are much beefier now. They're now using M5 hardware. Plus the actual mount for the motor and the idler on the other side is way easier to print without supports and is so much stronger. Plus it uses less plastic. Just general overall improvements here. Plus if you look at the back side of the Y gantry, it's all captive nuts. Heats and inserts are incredibly cool and they were fun for the first pass but they're really expensive, at least in comparison to just like standard M5 hardware. Plus you can like put it in kind of cattywampus and then when you try and screw something in, your screw sticking out at a weird angle. If you just print a flat face where the nut pops in, it's gonna be perfectly perpendicular. So I decided to opt for that. It is a bit more of a pain in the butt because sometimes they pop out, but I got the tolerance dialed in pretty well so you can just print it and they just pop right in. So it's much cheaper, much easier to print, much easier to assemble. Then, like I mentioned, the X carriage, <laughs> is now consisting of two pieces, just like the original open builds design. No more of that big old honking block thing. This allows you to really tension the idler wheels, the things that are actually running in the V slot, much easier. And it's a million times easier to print, just print these two panels. Also, I decided to try and make stuff as modular as possible. So I'm still up in the air about what I'm gonna do with the ring light and if I wanna stick with that, but I didn't want to design something into this X carriage that inherently had my current design of ring light baked into it because then I kind of have to redesign the whole thing. I'm kind of committing to that ring light design. So I wanted to make it modular. You see those two holes right there in the center? This is so you can mount a ring light and camera assembly to kind of fit right underneath here. So no matter what camera you're using or what lighting configuration you want to use, you can just have this standard hole pattern that you can bolt whatever assembly that you make right onto the bottom of it. And if you want to change how your whole camera system works, it won't mess with this guy at all. The last two things, which arguably are the things I'm most excited about. I am no longer using a rack and pinion for the Z axis. Thank goodness. The rack and pinion was incredibly unreliable. I tried to print out the rack and have it interface with an off the shelf pinion, but two problems there. One, the pinion is really hard to get your hands on and I couldn't find a good reliable source of these pinions. Bummer. And two, the rack was not great. It wasn't very precise. And the farther up you went, any like little shifting in it would mean that it would just completely come out of the, the pinion and it wouldn't interface anymore. It was a nightmare. It was not a good solution. 
So instead I'm using a timing belt. The motor is just on the top, just as before, but it doesn't have a pinion on it. It has a timing pulley. And at the bottom, there's just a loose idle one, not hooked up to anything. It just spins freely. And then this new Z carriage, uh, it has these awesome little like grooves in it. So you can just kind of push the timing belt right into the print and it'll lock it right in place. So when it spins, it'll move it up and down. Plus you can just cut it right here and add another one and it will move both of them. Same thing as before, it'll kind of alternate back and forth. And second, the thing that has caused me the most plague with this machine is the linear rail for the Z-axis. This guy right here, this gantry would always fall off and I'd lose all the little ball bearings in it. It's small, but it matters. There are little stops. Look at that. It can't fall off. That's, I know you're like, Steve, that's so dumb. It's huge. I, I can't tell you how many times I've been crawling around on my floor trying to pick up ball bearings because the little roller thing just fell off the rail. Never again. Cool. So what's next? Now that I have the meat of the mechanical stuff finished on this, I'm gonna get the motors wired up and get all these messy cables finally tucked away inside the extrusion so it's all nicely, neatly hidden. Time to do cable management. Woohoo! <laughs> Look how freaking clean this thing is. All the wires are tucked away. They're all inside the extrusion. There's nothing messy sticking out or anything. It's all just, everything's where it's supposed to be. It's all tucked away and nice and neat. No freaking wires hanging out and flapping all over the place. Mm. I do really like having cable chain right there. I'm a little worried about down the road when eventually I'm gonna put a conveyor belt on this thing. It might get in the way, but I think that's a problem to solve later. Right now it keeps things so much cleaner and so much neater. And I think there is still a way to have a cable chain be here, but not get in the way of the conveyor belt. Now you'll notice I didn't terminate the end of all these motor and like limit search wires up here. They're just hanging loose because I am in the middle of designing the next revision of the motherboard. So I figured I might as well just wait until that's done before I plug everything in. In order to help keep all the cabling kind of tucked into the extrusion and out of the way, I'm using these little clippy guys. And these just go into the extrusion and hold the cabling kind of inside of it, just outside of the, the slot. And it keeps things so, so much neater. Ah, oh, that sounds so good. Oh yeah, and you ready for this? The best part? I know you've been waiting with bated breath. Ho 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 ho. Da click though. Chef's kiss. All right, that's it for this one. In the next one, I'm gonna be bringing up the next revision of the motherboard. This one's gonna have all the big fixes, things that I realized I did wrong in the first pass. Switching over to RS-485 for controlling all the feeders. I'm also switching to ARM for a microcontroller. Pretty much every board with a microcontroller I've ever designed has been with AVR. So definitely some new territory for me moving into this new board. I'm working on designing it right now. I have a lot of really smart and helpful people helping me out through the process. So hopefully we get a good bring up, but we'll see. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. But before I go, I wanna thank this video sponsor, PCBWay. I've been using PCBWay boards for this project, including this monster, and they've always come out awesome. I've asked them to do some pretty ridiculous stuff with PCBs, and they always make it happen some way or another. 
Someone on the Discord actually tried to get the encoder wheel that I designed made with a second slot for another encoder so you can get twice as much precision. And look at this freaking board. It's like mostly milled out in the back. Like, I don't even know how they made this board. <laughs> it's incredible. And yeah, it's also still really strong. It blows me away that they were able to do this. Like, that's just crazy. That's nuts. Out of all the board shops I've ever used, they have been the most uh, willing to work with my crazy asks with PCBs. And I have had a lot of weird crazy asks. They make great boards and they get out the door wicked quick. Thank you so much to PCBWay for sponsoring this video.